some jazz to you can make it yes, you. you gon' learn, you gon' learn, you gon' learn It was just past one winter tree man With a four or five step to the door like Oh my gosh, just throw that cash in a back bag Run around the back Hey everybody, it's Liz from the Lemon Bowl Vince from Irie Kitchen And welcome to the Irie Lemon Podcast So, yeah. question for you I remember when we had talked, you said that uh, we talked about Myers-Briggs, you're an ENFP, and how other people on your team who had different type of personalities, you know, we all organize information differently. We all, we all take in information differently, interpret it, organize it, work with it, etc. And again, this is information of all areas, personal work, etc. And I remember you saying that, um, you know, ENFPs are notorious for loving new new things shiny new objects shiny new toys you know the 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 new thing is the most exciting thing so what's happening is that they historically will end up quitting before they actually reap the rewards of that shiny thing because they they got impatient and wanted to get onto something else before it started to get its return and as vince and i know in, in business i mean me especially i really didn't make a dollar for three years that nothing good comes really quickly. So I remember you saying that this was kind of created, it's almost like a hack to your own personality, which I think is so smart because you're not working against your personality, you're working with it. Cause I think, I know like, I would love to pretend I'm not like all the things I hate about being a type two or an ESFJ where I'm overthink like personal relationships and all those, all those little flaws we have. And I, it's like, find a hack to work with your personality type as opposed to working in against it or wanting to change who you are, that's going to be a much bigger up, uphill battle. So can you talk a bit about that process for you and how you discovered that and then how you basically got around your own personality type? Yeah, yeah. So I think it's really two parts. Um, coming from a startup background and in the music industry, a lot of people are like-minded within mm-hmm. and, and uh, like to a fault, right? And coming into working in my first corporation, Uh, where I do now, um, my boss at the time had the complete opposite, like leadership style, personality type for me. So it was really important for me in order to influence change and influence decision making that I understood how to properly do that. And in order for me to do that, I had to understand the other personality types and how they operated beyond just my own. So for me personally, I like to go off a gut feeling and kind of like in the moment, a shiny new thing. Well, as my uh former boss he what he really liked was data and options and time like i didn't care about any of those three things um (laughs) so but under me understanding that i knew that's what i had to do in order to move forward in a decision and retrospectively what i've learned is that even though i have this interest i really value that because it's important um you know, you're de-risking things in a lot of different ways by doing so. So for me, I knew I had to shift and mold accordingly and, and be able to help accommodate to be able to work well with other people and to be able to get things accomplished. And even though I really like shiny new things and new ideas, when I get excited because of the thought of finishing it and yeah. what it will do and how it will affect it. So I knew that I had to become more elastic with my my interests and my skill set and personality types in order to accomplish that. And especially Know, like in terms of side projects, when you're doing those, you're working for yourself, um, you have to become as elastic as possible and you have to flex into roles that you might not enjoy or you might not be skilled at. And so you really have to augment those either through other people or through yourself. And typically it's yourself when you're just getting started because <laughs> you don't have you don't have money and you also don't have the understanding of who to hire and what to do. So I think for me, um, yeah, I've just really tried to be intentional about filling that gap in and becoming as a, as elastic as possible uh, within skill sets. So in that way, depending on whatever the situation is, you can still get to that end goal, whatever it is that excites you. Damn, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was good, man. <laughs> like, there's so much, yeah, there's so much there. I yeah. think like, uh, what I've learned is I've learned, I've learned about personalities and all these types Shout out to Liz. So I was like, yo, like people suck. And she's like, nah, you just haven't learned about people. And I was like, <laughs> and so then like, you know, learning about like all this you stuff. You didn't know about like Enneagram or Myers Briggs, right? I was just like, 
completely just like what? <laughs> what e what e? <laughs> That's a thing. Like what's what are you talking about? Like, you know? And so uh, no, but I agree with you though. I think learning about other people, especially if you're an owner operator, right? And so a lot of people that I talk to, they want to be owners. They want to like make money. They want to see their vision be something, but not necessarily always be the girl or guy running it day to day. And so if you ever aspire that to happen or projects go smoothly or anything you want to see in the world, you have to, you need people. No one does it by themselves. And it's better if you like take the time like Anthony is saying to understand who you're working with, what do they need. Um, and if you're like someone like me where you're easy like Sunday morning, like it's not hard for you to like adjust. You know, if you're more of like a cryptic person and easy, then you, you know, you figure out like that out. But for me, it's like I'm easy. So it's like, okay, like, you need more information. You, you need more of this. You need more of that. I can get you those things, right? Because I want you to, to be a part of this journey with me. I want you to be on this project. That's my duty as the quote unquote number one or leader of this project or really pushing this idea to make it easier on everybody else. And so I think learning about personalities, learning about other people just helps you that. And like, I think having candid conversations, I think tests are really great. Liz and I took a, uh, I think it's cold day. Or whatever test I, think we, I was like the assessment yeah I think, I think it was it was like expensive whatever but it was definitely <laughs> i was like liz you make me take a fifty dollar test online <laughs> like you know i'm ready on the fence on these things you know i don't think they're like all real but like <laughs> but i took it and I, I love that one and i think um yeah like from my experience the last few months it's helped me because i'm a great starter personally and not a great always follow through so the teams I normally like surround myself with people with is like people who are great starters, which is great. That gets you hot. You build a brand that gets really early success. But then like everyone's bored and no one's trying to do anything because they're not like the steady like I'm trying to like see this through kind of thing, right? And so um, it'll just help you. It's helped me to like learn those kind of things. Are you familiar with it, Anthony? With what? The Colby assessment. It's K O L B E. I haven't taken it. Okay, I will. We'll put a link to it in the show notes. It, and it's again, it is a little price. Was it seventy dollars? It was some money, yo. It was some money. I remember being like, worth it though. I was like, Rich, don't look at the credit card. Like, it's, it's, not like, it's not like not like a lot of money. It's like a five. It's not a five grand but test. Most but most personality like, tests are free yeah, online. Exactly. So you're yeah. like, I'm paying fifty dollars for like what? Like whoever's making this test right now is making so much money. But, but here's like, the deal. <laughs> There's something special about it. And me, and now I know my personality type, I researched it thoroughly before not only me paying for it, but telling <laughs> Vince to pay for it. Yeah. So much so that I was like, Vince, I'm going to pay for it for you. And he's like, no, 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 I'll buy it. But like, I want, I was so bought into it because it talks, you know, personality types, there's so many different ones. Enneagram is super hot right now, which talks about what motivates you, what, what you're driven, what, 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 yeah, what, what motivates you and what, what you're afraid of. And, um, you know, Myers-Briggs looks at how your brain works and, and, you know, there's four different specific categories. Colby assessment is all about, correct me if I'm wrong, Vince, it's how we make decisions, right? And how, we're, how our brain gets put in action best. And in order, and you know, I'm a big fan of getting people in action. So if I want to get people in action, I need to know how they get into action. And to your point, everyone takes, everyone gets into action based on different information. So you might be more Anthony based on your instinct, your gut, you know, somebody else though, your former boss, it was data stats, you know, all that. And it, it, it looks at these different categories and everyone is a different degree of it, but some are lower, some are higher. So I run a bit higher on data and information. So if Vince wants me to jump on something, if he can give me some information and data up front, I'm going to jump a lot faster than like, you know, the podcast where he had no information took me five months to say yes. So in hindsight, he probably could have gotten a yes in like a week if he had had like that data. And similarly, like with, with Vince, like, it would be kind of a waste of my time to, like, you know. With, like, too much. Yeah. Because I'm down by, like, probably the second explanation. Like, my, like, one of the quick starts is, like, out of 10, mine was, like, a nine. So, like, I jump. I take risks. I'm, I don't fear consequences. I don't fear outcomes, which is good and bad. Liz just saw a couple of businesses I've started and failed. Just, <laughs> just being friends with her. I'm like, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Let's do it. Um, yeah. 
So I'm always down. So I'm the person, if you're trying to do something, like, I'm down. Yeah. Not going to get any pushback, none of that. Like, you're going to get, like, smart ideas and help, but you're not getting, like, that's dumb. Why would this work? Yeah. I'm I think on this topic, like, I don't want to discourage people from having, like, a gut feeling and just rolling with stuff. Um, because I think there's a difference between follow through and just building out skill sets to become elastic. And what I mean by that is to be able to flex and mold further. So without having to go your intentions, without having to like fully fulfill this business idea or this skill set all the way through, it's instead of just reading about something, you dip your toes into it enough to learn to un for an understanding. And that helps you become more elastic. So then that way, when you have all these other variables within a business or a conversation, you can really help to put the right context behind those thoughts mm -hmm. and those decisions. Uh, and then you can properly manage them or hire them out accordingly versus yeah. just reading about it and never actually doing it, you know, becoming more elastic, dipping your toes in versus actually following all the way through. So one of the pieces of advice they give to people that are heavy on the data and, and information is that you can't have a whole team of that. And if you have a partner that's like that, you have to literally, like they had an example where they put a time limit on how long they can research things, then they have to act. Because yeah. otherwise you could research for five years and never actually act on things. So this is why I know in, in my recent experience, I ended up hiring my latest employee based on the Colby assessment because I realized that like Vince was saying, a lot of his group is similar to him. So I hired someone that has very opposite strengths and weaknesses as me. And that mm -hmm. way we balance each other out, which I think it sounds so obvious, but what happens is like, you know, for a while I, I was thinking, well, they're, they're talking on my behalf. You know, it's a social media assistant. They should probably be bubbly and enthusiastic and outgoing and, and just like me. And, and obviously it sometimes can be easier to hire someone that's like you that you would actually want to hang out with and go out with and you're, you could be best friends just as much as coworkers. And so I think what happens is hiring managers, we tend to hire people that are like us because they're fun to hang out with and we get along with them. We could talk for hours, but I really wanted to intentionally hire someone that was nothing like me and that's exactly what I did. And it's been incredible so far. And I think that that's where... If you guys are, if you are interested, we'll link to the Colby assessment. A lot of people have their whole team take it or new hires. I think in the, for context of that too, goes back to Anthony's first thing about like projects and start, like where are you at in the process? Like I think a lot of like Liz and I are talking about, if you're in the business and you're trying to scale it and grow it now, those yeah. are things that you should need. Like, like to Anthony's point, like if it's just like an Instagram, I don't think you should be taking right. my bridge <laughs> test, bro. I think you should make the Instagram account. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't care if you're an EFMP or whatever, just make the Instagram account, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. If you have success, you have some people working for you, you want to keep them happy, keep them motivated. If you're in that position, everything we just said in the last five minutes, I think you should take it, you should apply. So finishing up on the managing chaos, obviously, I know you were using that system, nothing to do with quarantine. Do you have any tips or anything that you've utilized specifically going on with us being in quarantine right now and with COVID-19 and maybe has there been chaos in terms of like working remotely? I know you used to work with your coworkers in person, right? So maybe you can speak on that a bit or any other tips on uh, specifically to today's current time managing chaos? So I think we're still like figuring it all out, right? And and during that time, I would encourage people to just over communicate. Um, it gets mentally exhausting at the end of the day, just being on Teams meetings and Zoom meetings all day. You're just emotionally drained. And there it's so easy to want to go and do something else while you're doing it. I was, you know, being on these calls a day, I've like the last couple of weeks, I've been probably averaging 14 to 15 hours a day work wise, like for the day job just because being in healthcare, there's a lot going on right now. Um, so I, I'd get exhausted, but then I was like, I have this anxiety of like, I have to do all these other things. And so I'd be on a Teams call with somebody going through strategy and I'm answering emails at the same time. And so I'd like, very recently, I just started only doing one thing and just <laughs> like mentally saying, it's okay for this other thing not to happen. Um, so I think over communicate in terms of calls, just call somebody, teams them, whatever it may be. And then the second thing is um, just focus on doing one thing at a time. Like it's 
it's something that I'm saying. It's something I'm still working on. Um, so far, this uh, podcast, I've only done this. I haven't done like looked at email or phone or anything else. <laughs> so I'm working on it. But those would be my two pieces of advice um, in terms of a tool. Uh, like if you're looking to do that sprint board and you're looking for an online tool, there's a ton of them out there. And if it's just for you, you can use uh, use it for free. There's Trello. We're using Miro, M-I-R-O dot com right now within our team. It gives us more of an expanded view into uh, different different things we can run within the type of work that we do. But um, Asana is another one. Monday dot com. Those are all ones that you can you can use for that that method I was talking about earlier. That's cool. Vince, what about you? Have you, do you have anything to share on that? Well, first off, I failed that test. I've been on my phone looking at things since we've been on the podcast. Really? <laughs> that's, I feel like a failure right now. Uh, yeah, I do that. <laughs> well, Liz, you know, I always do that. Uh, <laughs> so I'm working on that. I, uh, managing chaos, like, again, like, First thing, I'm like, I'm now worried about how calm I am during, like, times like this. Like, I am not worried at all. And so, like, now, like, being on the phone with so many people, I'm like, all right, so is everyone just worried? And I'm, I'm sure, like, that's not, like, the whole picture, but everyone I've been talking to. So I'm like, okay, now I'm, like, getting some of their, like, their weird energy on me about, like, all right, should I be more, like, cautious? Should I be more? But I'm just not. But I do think when it comes to, like, a, managing your day, my strategy has always been what do I want to get done today, and that's how I, like, consider my win or success, which is great in, like, theory, and I think it, like, it, it, like it works but when there's like things you have to do like like anthony is saying like i need to be on the zoom call i also got to send emails back i do like like that like just focus on doing one thing and actually getting it done i think sometimes we put the work in our head that is bigger than it actually is or more than it actually is and then we end up keep pushing it off and now we have a friday where we have to do everything and we could have just done it through the week and i think that like just like getting over it mentally about what you have to do and is getting it done as fast as possible actually gives you more time, makes you like even more happy uh, than like I think people like sometimes like set themselves up for. It. Yeah, oh, I set myself up for. It. I was like, oh, I don't want to do that yet. It'd be like a five minute thing, but yeah. now I got thirty five minute things I got to do on Friday, all done before four. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I always get the most emails Friday from three to six. Yeah, whenever it actually works. Literally, <laughs> I'm like, you know, I was here all week. I was here all week. Uh, well, this is probably a good little segue. I'll give a quick um, little talk about how I manage chaos and everything. Uh, and for me, it's time blocking. Do you do, do time blocking like in a calendar? Yeah. So I a lot of people, that. yeah. So a lot of people have asked me about it. So this is probably a good time to take a moment and talk about it. So I, I use my electronic calendar for my entire day and it's, it's basically scheduled out pretty strictly by the hour. And I put everything in there. So I put like workouts, I put in doctor's appointments, conference calls. Uh, so I put in actual appointments as well as personal things. In fact, like they say, put your personal things in first, like put in your workout, make that a priority you know, back rest in peace and we had vacation, put your travel plans in first, you know, make sure you have time, whether it's a manicure or, you know, put that self-care in your calendar is what I'm getting at. So that goes in the calendar. Is, and that way I have a balanced life that isn't just work. Cause I work from home. So the lines are meshed all the time. So I have to schedule in that the, uh, the quote unquote self-care. And a lot of times for me, self-care is just a workout. Um, you know, right now I don't have any me time. I'm, I'm homeschooling two kids. We haven't been apart for now six weeks. So I haven't had an, an alone minute to myself in six weeks, which fun fact is awful. Uh, so like the workout is my quote unquote me time nowadays, which frankly, they're all around me the whole time touching me. There's no personal space anymore. <laughs> and, uh, but I, the time blocking still has held me through this whole situation because what I like about using the electronic calendar is that I can look at my day. The, I always look the night before for the next day and I look at what's coming up and if anything isn't important, I'll reprioritize right then and there. And of course, electronically, you can li literally drag and drop, redo the time. And if something comes up, which in my life, 
that happens a lot. Having little kids, things come up all the time. So, you know, they've got a Zoom call with their teacher or this needs to be moved to this time or one's literally crying and breaking down. Now I have to spend an hour getting him back off the ledge. What I can do is quickly reschedule and reallocate versus just having like a never ending to do list that never gets done. So the other thing too, is that if I, uh, I'm a big fan of doing things that might not be due for two weeks, doing them when I have that time, because I might not get that time back. So if I have a big project for a client that's due in two weeks, I do it as soon as possible. And more often than not, I'm going to turn that project in a week early. So that does two things. Number one, it gets me repeat business. Number two, it protects me from the unexpected because you guys plan for the unexpected to happen. Assume that something's going to come up. Assume that someone's going to need you. Assume that you might have a call with someone that runs two hours longer than you thought it would. Just assume that your time's going to get eaten up and be proactive about it so that you aren't caught not getting things done because, you know, I get things done, you guys, and I'm, I'm super busy and I have a full life on all platforms, but I get things done. Nothing doesn't get done. And that's all because I, I have it all in writing. It's all in my electronic calendar and it's with me on my phone or my computer. So wherever I am, I can be in the living room with my kids. I could be making dinner. I can still update my calendar, readjust, and I do it by the day and by the week and by the month. So there you go. Time blocking one on one. <laughs> yeah i mean i do the same i think i'm not uh like i i don't know how to describe really i'm not a huge planner i am and i'm not so i think because i have to plan and put everything down in detail of like all right i think this is everything i can accomplish this week outside of work stuff um i just go with the flow and like whatever i feel like doing at that time i go and do and i intentionally try to not plan it and be spontaneous with like everything. Yeah. Um, so, cause that's, that's kind of how I live, but I understand I have to be, you know, very structured and, and have a plan in order to accomplish stuff, you know, with my day job too. So I'd like, yeah. even if you want to be super spontaneous and you want to be laid back and have that lifestyle, if you have a lot of stuff you want to accomplish, sometimes you have to time block and get stuff. Right. Right. Like me. Right. Plan anything, yeah. Don't prep for anything. Just, you know, you get a text from Liz like, hey, where are you on the podcast? I'm like, oh, we had a podcast today. Like, you know, just like, just live life. Like, there's no it's work. Like, it's- literally, though. <laughs> like, literally. <laughs> you know, it's, it's amazing. No, I'm kidding. But no, yeah. <laughs> no, there is, there is. Yeah, how do you manage your day, Vince? I mean, because here's the deal. Vince, here's the thing with Vince, you guys. He owns a restaurant. He has you know, vendors that come in on certain days, vendors that have to be suppliers that need to be paid, banks that you have to go to at a certain time, orders that come in. Don't let him kid you into thinking he doesn't it's get things done. So how, luck. so what? It's all luck. <laughs> I don't even know how I'm here, kid. I was looking at my old report card. I had a 1.7 GPA. Like, I don't get it. <laughs> like, honestly, I just think I'm just like, I just found like what I'm good at. To be honest. Like, it's not like, I'm learning how to like pull it apart now. And like, there's like jokes in it. Like I have fun with life. A lot of it is just like, I'm always ready. I'm always on from like 2 a.m. to right now. I'm never like off. So like, and I just, I like winning and I like the, I do like the rush of that. So I do get things done. And like when I have time though, it, it gets scary how much I can fit in. So I am like efficient, like naturally. Like I know what 30 minutes actually is. And so I can focus I, I've taught myself because to Anthony's point, I think I've, I've had ADD and ADHD, and my parents are against like Adderall and Ritalin, like Ritalin and all that kind of stuff. I've learned how to like to like a sprint kind of mentality, like how to focus for four hours. Where like all, all I do is this, and also not do anything, <laughs> really quote unquote productive in any measure, really at the same time. So I think I've just learned how to like focus. To like Liz's point and Anthony's point, putting things in your calendar though do help and makes you more in control of your schedule once you get to a certain busy level. I got to a point where like I was doing so much in a day that I needed to like decipher what was most important for me to do. So like, I would say like two quarters of 2019, to put it in business terms, were like a complete waste of effort on my part. I don't beat myself up on it or anything. 
It's just that, like, I got to the point where, like, that free nilly, just do what I want to do, get things done, did serve me because it didn't, like, help my top end strategy. But again, I was around people who were all like that as well. Though not to anybody. So no one was ever, like, questioning or, like, making sure that we're, like, up to date what we set out to do for the beginning of the year. Right? <laughs> so, like, to you guys' point, I do think it is very important. And I'm, like, as Anthony's working on not checking his phone and doing emails, I'm going to work on how to, like, plan out my day and make sure that like whatever I should be doing with my talents for the things I'm part of. Right. And that's like a different conversation versus than like thinking you have to do everything and get everything done. Right. And then it's like obvious when you say it out loud, but like when you're in it, sometimes you miss it. So how, do you manage, it. how do you manage like a due date? Like let's say you have something that you're doing a project, whether, you know, how do you sign it half to get done? How do you manage that due date without having like a tight schedule? Um, like, so for me, it's like, again, like to your point, I kind of do things as soon as I can do them. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I only like take on things I actually kind of want to do. So there's never like a forced. That's smart. But I'm also like fortunate in that aspect. Right. Like, I'm like, and there, you do run into things you don't want to do. And I'm also really good at getting other people to do things I don't want to do. Like, really good at. <laughs> um, but like, if I, like, if I have to do it, I'll just knock it out. And like, if it's something I don't want to do, and it's like a big project, and it's important. I do that first. All right. And I, and I like I like eat my greens first. You know what I'm saying? Instead of eating like a chicken <laughs> first. Thing. Like you just gotta get it over with. Um, but I end up like in a sick way. Like it. I like things to be challenging for me, hard for me to do. I like due dates, right? I like to like crush stuff. So like all that kind of like in a sense like also falls into my plate. Um, but. Not for one second do you think I'm organized. Don't think for one second that I have it all together. I always tell people, like, how do you do it? I'm like, it, it's all luck. It's grace. Like, it's, there's no, there's a lot of people that help me. There's no, like, <laughs> I'm learning now. I'm learning, like, how to, like, make myself more efficient. But, like, it is, like, tomorrow I do a Zoom call. We'll start right at 10. Like, all right. There's no prep. There's no, you know what I'm saying? It's just, like, got on a call today. It's going to get done. Uh, there's a catering job that I forgot about. They they text me so they need it. <laughs> I'm like, oh crap, you can't do the podcast. I gotta do this catering job, and I just get it done. Now, someone who's just like more like efficient with a new week ahead and like had it mapped out, like everybody be like, no, me get it an hour before and I can still get it done because I'm the goat. I'm just kidding, but like. <laughs> but here's the thing. I think what I've learned that's so important for people uh, is that if Vince was really organized and structured and time blocked. Then he wouldn't be all the thing, the amazing things that he is that other people aren't, which is obviously super intuitive, super risk taking. You know, I mean, you guys, he opened a restaurant at 19. Most people would have like researched that and realized, oh, that's not the best idea to do. The fact that he jumps on things and takes risks and isn't so calculated and organized and structured, that opens up your brain and that opens up the possibilities to jump into other things that most people are too afraid to do. And most people, most people are too afraid to miss a deadline. I mean, I know I am. I don't, I don't want to miss anything. I don't want to mess up quote unquote. I don't want to get something wrong or, and I think that that in a way can be limiting. So I think it's just good to maybe have a balance. And if it's not just with you, make sure your team is balanced. Yeah. One thing I like, this and I are talking about this. I don't care about outcomes so much. I care about intent. And Anthony said this too, when you're meeting people, but I care about this for all things in life. Like you're, you're always going to mess up. Not everything's going to be perfect. Like it's like part of it. But if you intend to get something done, if you intend to promise somebody a paperclip and get it to them, or promise somebody the moon and get it to them, like Anthony said, then you do it. It might not always be on the exact time frame that you said, but I don't care so much about that. I care more about actually coming through and actually like doing it. And when you like end up, like for me at least, how I work, as long as that stress is gone, I end up doing it on time. You know what I'm saying? I end up doing just wanting to do it because I said I was going to do it. Uh, and so, like, I like that. And I just, like, I just mold my life around those kind of things, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, it's dope. I like that. I love how we all do it differently. All right. Is that, like, like, the, the, like the, the theme going in, like, in that part? Like, yo, how do you work? <laughs> yeah, literally, though. <laughs> and then take things and, like, you know, like I'm gonna take structure from you guys, 100. I'm not just gonna say that I'm not ever going to. I think that's smart and that's right. You know. Okay, Anthony. Next topic is putting your back up against the wall. Yeah. So, kind of building off of this last one, um, 
when you have so many things that you have to get done and you only have a certain window to get them done in or a certain time frame, um, you have to, you get into the state where you have to adapt and you have to change or else you're going to crumble. And I think the current pandemic that's going on right now with COVID, that's the case for everybody or for a lot of people. Um, the amount of change and the amount of flex that businesses, healthcare systems, and individual people have had over the last six weeks, everyone's back's been up against the wall and they've just had to figure it out. Um, they've been able to, and, and as a result of that, putting your back up against the wall, I would recommend to do it at some point in your life if you haven't already intentionally um, and purposefully because there's good things that come out of it. Um, even if you know you don't get your you know necessarily that quote unquote win um, or that success at the end you were able to build up your own capacity and what you thought is possible and so it builds you up more mentally than anything else and you're you have like a new norm for yourself and a new level of expectation so you know like uh, a lot of whether it's weight loss right whether it's building a business and you don't know where to start and you have all these deadlines all of a sudden that pop up um, for me like I think the biggest example i started my first startup when i was 20 and dropped out of school and then got into artist management and then found myself in um well not only talent management but also production of music festivals and i think just timing wise like i lived out of the back seat of my car for two years i woke up worked had so many things i had to get done and that's when i really started to figure that out and kind of have that moment and build that capacity up so then when i went back to school and finished you know i I didn't really want to be in school for that long. So I had 53 credits left and I knocked them out in a year and then like did another startup, GM at a bar and restaurant, consult for a media company. But like that was my new normal. Whereas a lot of the people that I was surrounded with that were in college, you know, were going to class for a couple hours a day and it was just very different. So I think like Vince, you know, you building your capacity up at an early age with, with the restaurant and Liz, like you started the blog 10 years ago. Like, and you have a family and you have all these other factors. Um, whenever you can put your back up against the wall, it helps build that capacity up and some of the best things can come out of it as a result. I have a question for you. How much do you, how much do you like that feeling? I live for it. Me too. Like, like I feel, yeah, that's where I feel comfortable. Um, yeah, 100%. Like I was just telling Liz, like with my, before we got the call started, my day job, like there's urgency right now and it's chaotic and I feel comfortable within the chaos and um, I feel comfortable in uncertainty and like in trying times like that's when I really get excited, even though it might not be a good situation. Right. So that's where I like thrive and get fueled. So uh, I other than that, like if it's comfortable, I'm out. Like I, it's not for me. Oh my God, yeah. Vince to a T. <laughs> like, dude, like I, I love like. All right, like I've been helping Liz with a couple of things, and I told her I was gonna do something. She's like, oh, don't worry about it. You got a busy. I was like, nah. Like I said, I was gonna do it. So I have no problem sending you videos or whatever I'm doing at 3 a.m. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I love that feeling. And like the first thing I was part of, I was part of a local agency in town, and like they were talking about, oh, we're gonna do things for two hundred dollars. I was like, dude. And I put, I called myself out, like, I'm going to get big projects. And so uh, that's what I did. And I love that pressure. I love that, like, sense of urgency. And, like, shout out to Spectrum because they gave us our first check. But, like, it was, and it was, like, a big one, as I told everybody. I love that feeling, though. And I think during a pandemic, like, things, and uh, Liz called this out earlier, though, with the restaurant. It's too, of, like, much of, like, a routine for me. It was yeah. Mondays like this, Tuesdays like this. And so, like. Like I like the constant change. I like pressure. I like, I like changing things up. I like figuring it out. I like the whole no rules. Like you know, like <laughs> I love it because it's like if you, if you have to get mad, it's fun about can okay, get it to us. Who who's most effective? Okay, great. That's a great win for our hospital group. Like that's smart. Versus than like okay, I have six months to find a max contract. You know, it's like it's not as like it's not as fun. It's not as like wartime. You know what I'm saying? It's, oh, I'll do it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. When you can get, like, when you can create tunnel vision for yourself on something and you lock in and you're in the zone, like, it's it's just a whole different world versus, like, all right, what do I got to do today? What can I do today? It's, like, I don't have time to think about that. I don't have time to go out to the bar. I don't have time to go to Europe for backpacking for a week. Like, I need to get this done. 
Um, and when you're, when it's something that you're passionate about, um, that's, I think when the best feelings come and, and once you have that feeling once, like it doesn't go away, you just keep doing it and leveling up and putting more and more on yourself. And then eventually like you crash and then you're like, okay, cool. There's like the limit for me. So now I'm just going to like, I know to play right here until yeah. I can like kind of build that up like a muscle. That's I, like that. I like that. Yeah. It's, it's a high, man. I encourage yeah. everyone to like do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's funny because like I um I I can't tell if I like that feeling or not. I I've really been enjoying the quarantine, but in full disclosure, my business is thriving right now because everyone's cooking more than ever before. So like we're seeing numbers we've never seen ever. And it's exciting. And I love what I do for a living. I'm really proud of the business I've grown. And, but, but at the end of the day, like I started the business and didn't make money for three years on it because I just wanted people cooking in their homes more. And here we are, and everyone's cooking every day around the clock. There's no more like peak busy days of the week. Every day is a peak day. There's no slow weeks within the month. There's no, there's no like there's no slow times anymore. It's crazy. And I'm just like so excited and fired up that, you know, it's, um, you know, it's hard to say that I am up against a wall because I would say where I am up against the wall is that I'm also now I have the least time to work than I've ever had because I'm homeschooling now. So, yeah. you know, where typically this would be a time where you'd want to just work 16 hours and I would kill to do that. Uh, I mean, I can't tell you what I would do to go work, to work, period. I just, I don't really have a lot of that. I can't put myself first right now. So that's well, the, the. Just, dumb. just so like listeners know, like where I'm coming from on it though, is like your back is up against the wall. You just have different variables within that equation than Vince and I have. Yeah. Vince and I are single 20 something year old dudes and yeah. you are a mom <clears throat> married you have all these other responsibilities and tasks and your business is growing at, you know, a rate that's way different. Right. So like while we focus all of our waking time on work and yeah. things and projects, like you just have a different mix and it's probably easier for us exactly. to manage the chaos because we have to wear one hat one or hat. like a couple, you got to be like, all right, cool. Like doing a workout, wow. have the kiddos. Like, yeah, you have all these hats you have to wear. And so like anyone listening that, you know, has all those different and complex variables know that like you're definitely putting your back up against the wall and it doesn't mean you have to do it just within business. That's just the point yeah. of our lives that we're in right now where we're like, that's what it is for us. And yeah. also being your friend for so long, friend, you naturally have your back against the wall. I don't think, I think it's just your natural. I don't think you realize that. I probably don't realize that. Yeah. I think that's your, like, you don't do a blog for free for three years if you don't have like, something in your head about like I gotta make this work or want I want this to work. Like sure. you don't have kids, have husband, manage your business, and you don't have that pressure of like, all right, I gotta get this done by now because my kids are coming home at three and yeah. then my husband's coming home at four. Like you're naturally in a state of my back's against the wall. Anything I want to yeah. do at this time frame, I have to get it done. So I think it's your normal. And so like <laughs> and yeah. like how easy it is right now, like, because everyone's on quarantine, everyone's struggling for you to be like, you know what? I'm not going to post right now. My blog's taking a hiatus. I'm taking care of my family. Yeah. Doing that. You're doing live videos with your kids. You're posting even more than you ever have. Like, you're doing podcasts every week. I'm pretty sure you're <laughs> outside your door right now. They probably want something to eat. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, so I think I would argue to Anthony's point, it's just different for you, but I think it is your normal. I think yeah. anyone that's an entrepreneur or a self starter or anyone that works, and anything they want to, you're naturally in that state. And yeah. That gives you that drive, that hustle, that passion behind everything. It's like, now there's like heightened experiences of it when it's like a pandemic or like my yeah. business might go out of, I might go out of business next week where there's like heightened like cases of it. And that's what I'm saying, chase those feelings. Cause like, you don't know your, like to Anthony's point, you don't know your breaking point. Right. So it's always great to know, especially before a pandemic, where you can handle and where you break at. Right, yeah. and you know that. I mean, you know, I can push this much, this far. I can keep this pace. And we've talked about before for this long. Um, I love that. So yeah, yeah. I'd argue, Liz, that you're there. Probably. Oh yeah, <laughs> with more variables. Yeah. yeah, that's way harder to do. And like, that's, that's why I big up like female entrepreneurs because I know how hard it is. 
to, to be an entrepreneur, one, to have a startup, yeah. that's hard. To be a, a girl that does it, on top of that, like I already know, like the social pressures and West yeah. Michigan pressures, like for sure, that's not easy to do. Like, like running a business is the hardest you can ever do in your life. Period. I feel like, and so like, um, I don't know how you do it, friend. Big ups to you. Let's give a shout out right now to all the homeschooling parents listening, because it is not. Big up to you guys. It's like, I'll be an absent parent during times like this. I'll be like playing my video game you or can't. like working my business. Like wife take care of the kids. Like I'll I'll come yeah. out every once once an hour. <laughs> like, you just can't. Yeah, it's it's kind of crazy. <laughs> we we'll get into that, but it's, yeah, now we got her thinking about it, and she's just getting anxiety. Like it's oh. like awful. Why? Well, it's honestly like more i'm also i'm in so many like group texts with other mom friends and of all different you know i have friends with four kids you know what i mean like i only have two i was thinking today i'm so glad they can they're not in the diaper stage like they can go to the bathroom by themselves like this would have been a lot worse if they were babies or you know so i just try to stay like focus on on the positive but yeah i think to your point everyone's backs are probably up against the wall right now and i do probably thrive on it because I feel like I'm thriving in quarantine which is crazy and you know I think aside from like if of course like of course I'm lucky no one in my family is sick we're all healthy I mean we, we haven't left our house in six weeks and I in a weird way as like a social extrovert I didn't expect to be thriving like this I thought I'd be like dying you know I mean the idea of not seeing people in person for this long you know never would have thought all right, so wrapping up, um, the last one, which is so important, Anthony, we're going to end it with listening before you speak. So on that note, I'm going to shut up and listen to what you have to say about that. <laughs> yeah, um, I think uh, it's really easy for people to want to always give their opinion and react, you know, really quickly. And the saying is, like, you have two ears and one mouth for a reason. Um, and you know, and that's you should listen before you speak. But really what I take away from that phrase is it relates to perspective. So when you listen to somebody and what they have to say, you're learning where they're coming from, what the context is behind it, and maybe how they got to that point. And all of those things are really important because that's that's coming from a different place other than yourself. And so that should be meaningful if it's going to impact or if a decision is going to impact them or people around them. So you know, while you can go in with your own assumptions of thinking, I know the answer to this, I have the answer to this, I would really encourage people and challenge themselves, whether it's personal or professional, um, to, to really listen to what that other person says and where they're coming from and be intentional of listening to it. Uh, once I started doing that, you know, a few years ago, um, a lot of times I ended up not giving my opinion or changing my opinion because of that, and it ended up being the right decision. Whereas if I would have if I would have just spoke my mind, uh, it would have been the wrong decision. And, you know, sometimes, especially if you're leading them or, you know, above them or whatever it may be, they're not going to talk back to you once you make a decision. They're just going to roll with it. But they might not voice their opinion for the consequences. So, you know, providing just like that opportunity consistently and knowing for people around you that you're going to listen and you're going to be intentional about listening, it makes them build more trust in you. Uh, be more reliant on you and be more open with you. So at the end of the day, better outcomes, but hard to get started with. That's good. That's really good. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, so smart. I saw a, uh, a video about listening sometime during quarantine. I was trying to find it. I always find these things I always want to share with people. But like, I get, I get in like deep holes of YouTube or like Reddit. <laughs> I was like, in it. And like, dude, I don't know how to find this link for you. Like, I don't know. But like, <laughs> Like, uh, one of the guys said, like, people listen with the intent to reply. And complaints with other people. You know, my friend's like, yo, you're not listening. You didn't listen to me. And so, like, I, I pride myself on trying to become a better listener and a big listener. Because if you actually listen. And, I, and, like, let me explain this to people. It's not listening to give someone respect so they can talk. A lot of people listen for that. I'm going to respect you and let you speak, but I already know what I'm going to say. I already know my opinion is, right? Mm -hmm. Listening to somebody is actually like, like, like you just said, Anthony, where are they coming from? What do they actually mean? 
And when you listen, you start getting good at listening. You can kind of like start guessing where people are going to go. And then you can like start having like your answer ready. But like, if you're like listening just to, ready to say something, you know, like you missed the whole point. And so yeah. uh, I learned that thing like, yo, don't listen with the intent to reply, like listen to listen to be able to provide, you know what I'm saying? Like be able to provide feedback or maybe nothing or, or hey, this person can help you. Um, yeah, I think listening is like such a big skill in leadership. Like you have to listen, man. Like, you have to like listen, 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 listen. I always tell myself that too. Because I can get in modes where I'm focused and I'm not really listening to anybody. It doesn't help anybody. It doesn't help me. It doesn't help yeah, them. Yeah, her, folks. <laughs> and, um, like, and, and also when you're listening, you know, don't interrupt people. That's like, you know, when you're talking about pet peeves and meetings, just in general, you know, give people the time. And if people run on and run on, like, let them know. But, you know, hear them out. You know, hear them out and don't interrupt them because that can really, like, take things, derail conversations, you know? Yeah, 100%. So good. I think... But yeah. I got one more one more topic, and I want to ask you guys this, too. So, you know, Liz, we all started with various projects and businesses with these big visions. And, you know, Liz, you've seen it out over the last decade with blogs. And Vince, you've seen it out over the last several years with your, with your restaurant. And these are, you know, especially, you know, being young, long term is like two years <laughs> i mean it's all perspective and relative right but like yeah. uh it's two years can be long term to people and so in today's state people want to jump jobs or jump projects or jump interests or whatever it may be and it's really important to stay patient for those longer term things and so augmenting short-term wins to stay patient for long-term wins is something that can really help people and finding whatever that short-term reward system is for them so they can stay patient in whatever they're building. What was that for you guys? Like Liz, what was that for you over the last decade building your blog and Vince for you building the restaurant? Hmm. Well, I would say that I could give you a faster answer I can think of with uh, weight loss. It was always, I would have a weekly weigh-in and just seeing like the small, like, you know, half a pound to a pound loss each week kept me going for the longer term. Uh, and in terms of the blog, I'm trying to think, I would say like the short term would probably be, you know, someone, you know, making one of my recipes, you know, in the very beginning, the idea of anybody making something that I published, like blew my mind that like even one person was doing it. Uh, so I would say the little short term gains like that. And then when I would start to get, you know, like, paid work that was always an exciting like short term you know even if it was just a couple hundred dollars in the beginning which that's not going to last you very long but that was a short term gain that made me want to it kind of justify what I was doing and spending my time on so I would then continue to work hard and push hard to create high quality content for people so those were some of the short term uh, gains that I got over time. And, and I would say even now I'm, I'm definitely more of a short term win thinker. Uh, I'm, I'm a big believer in 1% to infinity. So every day I do something 1% better, or I improve a system in my business 1% better, or I, I update this, I spend, you know, if I can do 1% better every day, every day forever. And same thing with like weight loss, if I can just get a workout in or eat healthy or, not drink alcohol or not drink, not eat sugar that day or whatever it might be. If I could just do a little bit every day, it adds up to something really big. Well, and it's like setting your own self expectations. Yeah. Right. So you're, you're accomplishing what you set out to do. I, I am expecting that I'm going to make this 1% better. I'm not expecting to do 180 degree turn oh, on it. It's very realistic expectation. Yeah. I think it's all about managing and having realistic expectations. Yeah. What about you, Vince? Yeah, so like, <laughs> uh, okay, I'll say first, what what drives me most is being able to do what I want to do every day. So I'm very simple and like I say, basic math with a lot of things. And I think that helps a lot because when you think about short term and long term, it helps you with whatever your goals are and how you want to see them through. So for me, at 19, I wanted a restaurant. At 17, I wanted to build an agency. At 23, after building agency, 
doing a restaurant. Like I'm at the point right now where I'm like, okay, I probably want to buy and scale companies. That's probably going to end up doing with, with my day job. And I'd be part of cool ideas and help with that. So I think in short term, I'm really good at just like having a thesis or big picture kind of focus of what I'm trying to accomplish. And then I just test and see and do and see if I like it. I'm not afraid to switch and stop doing something. I'm not afraid. Like, I don't care. I'll pivot. So, and then to manage long term, right? I'm young enough and I understand that. So like I have, I think everyone has time. Like, I don't try to put myself too much on like what it has to be in five years. But I also do know it takes time, right? So like I do run into a lot of young people that think in two years they're going to have like the biggest business. And I'm like, okay, well, unless you're working 20 hours a week and you sacrifice everything and you're, you don't make one bad decision, yeah, in two years you can have like a $100 million company with no investment, nothing. But like that's like impossible, you know what I'm saying? So like I'm also like very like practical with my approach and like how I go about things and like I love keeping things super simple. Like, I think I, I, I'll always say this: our generation, like Anthony, like it's so on. Like, it has to be this grandiose, big thing always. I'm like, it doesn't have to be. Like, it does not have to be. Like, what is it today? What is it tomorrow? Okay, do you not like it on Wednesday? Why don't you like it on Wednesday? Yeah. Like, let's edit and like let's change it. And then like long term, like you'll see. I feel like you'll see more wins. You know, like. In the short term, I always told Liz, like, I wanted the podcast. Liz dreamt up us doing videos with, with, like, food. My vision was, like, I want to do the podcast. I also love the visions of doing food stuff and taking it further along. You know what I'm saying? So I think for me, it's just, like, uh, being able to manage expectations, uh, understand your talent, and uh, being able to see the small thing in the, like, the, the small story first, right? What is the story? See that thing first. Um, yeah, and don't rush everything. Like, everything has to happen in two years, man. Like, like Liz and I just laugh at people we talk to. It's not like in a bullying way, but it's just like a lot of it because you haven't done, you've read about, you've observed, so you've been talk. Um, not if it's like actually doing it. And I, I like love the restaurant business because it taught me how much time it actually takes to actually build a real business. The other stuff that I did it was like super fast growth. Anything I've ever done was always quick, easy, short, fast money, short, fast returns. The restaurant like it took three years to get to like this point, mm-hmm. and I was working hard every day. Like, yeah, hard every day. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, yeah, man. man. Like, and the restaurants are hard businesses to run anyway, but it just showed me that like that's three years, and like another three years might get me here in the food business. You know, so I now appreciate time. I know how to like fit things in amount of time. I know how to work with time. Um, so I think it's like, time is your, our biggest asset. So. Oh yeah. yeah, definitely. Cool. And All I, right. And I big up you, bro. A lot of good topics. You're smart. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time and you're just, I love, I feel like so many people are going to benefit from this episode. Yeah, so yeah. if you guys, if you're listening, please, Send this, text this to a friend that would benefit from hearing it. I know you guys have a friend that wants to hear this, that needs to hear this episode right now. Uh, You know, definitely we'll leave Anthony's social media. Where can people find you on social media, Anthony? Uh, If you do Instagram uh, or LinkedIn, just Anthony underscore Lazaro. Um, Probably the best way to reach me. I'm not, I'm not a big, uh, big influencer celebrity. Respond to everybody. <laughs> um, no, I mean, I'm happy to whether, you know, you have questions or thoughts, um, whatever it is, let me know. Cool. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Hope everybody's staying healthy and safe right now. And we're thinking of you all and any of you that have a loved one that's sick. We hope that they recover quickly. And um, thank you guys for listening. We appreciate you being here. We appreciate your time. And we'll talk to you soon. Thanks all for right. having me. Peace out. Peace out.